Welcome to authoring new IT services with the vCloud Automation Center Advanced Service Designer. In previous videos, we looked at creating infrastructure blueprints and entitling them to our users for consumption in the vCloud Automation Center Service Catalog. Today, we're going to give you an overview of the Advanced Service Designer, talk about why you use it, the concepts behind the Advanced Service Designer, and who configures and manages it. Then we will look at creating advanced service designer objects, which include custom resources, which are items we can provision and manage, service blueprints so that we can request the custom resource, and resource actions so we can manage and carry out lifecycle operations on the provisioned resource. vCloud Automation Center provides purpose-built capabilities for automating the delivery and ongoing management of applications, desktops, and infrastructure services across multiple platforms. But what happens if you need to deliver additional IT services that are not covered by our out-of-the-box functionality? The Advanced Service Designer is a wizard-driven approach to designing the end-to-end -end process associated with delivering the service from request through to automated delivery with ongoing management for your provisioned resources. These custom services can be published to the vCloud Automation Center catalog along with your other application infrastructure and desktop services. The Advanced Service Designer is the engine that powers our X as a service capabilities. We've listed some of the X as a service use cases here. The Advanced Service Designer allows you to rapidly deploy new IT services and their day to operations leveraging VMware and partner-supplied VCO workflows and plugins. Service architects use the Advanced Service Designer to create and publish custom resources. These are the resources or the item types we allow our users to provision and manage. The service blueprints, that's the workflow and the form used so the users can request and provision that custom resource. Resource actions are the day two operations our users can use to manage their provisioned resources. Custom resource types are provided by the VCO plugins. These resources are the items your users will provision and manage. The Advanced Service Designer allows you to choose the resource to be provisioned and managed and allows you to determine which of the out of the box attributes are made available to your users. It also allows you to change the screen labels of those out-of-the-box attributes. To create a custom resource, the service architect chooses the custom resource to be provisioned. So we're going to add a new resource. We're going to choose something from the Active Directory plugin. And we're going to choose the AD user and give it a name of user. We're going to follow the wizard and click the next button and we're presented now with the details form that will be presented to our users when they review any items created from this resource type. What we're going to do here is we're going to remove this category field from the form. I'm going to click OK and we're going to click on the add button. We now have a resource action called user which is based on the Active Directory user. The Advanced Service Designer Wizard drives you through designing the end-to-end -end process associated with delivering the service from request all the way through to the automated delivery with the ongoing management of your provisioned resources. The service blueprints become the catalog items that are entitled to and requested by our users. That blueprint includes the workflow, which is responsible for the delivery, and the forms the user interacts with to request the item. And the resource action becomes the item actions which are entitled to our users and are made available on their provisioned resources. Just like the service blueprint, the resource action includes the workflow and the form the user interacts with. That's if a form is required at all. Sometimes they're not. The workflows for both the service blueprint and the resource action are provided by the VCO plugins. First, to create a service blueprint, the service author clicks on the green plus button. They navigate down through the plugins and they choose 
the relevant plugin, we're going to use the Microsoft Active Directory plugin and we're going to navigate to the user folder and we're going to choose to create a user with a password in an organizational unit. From here you can see that the workflow is interrogated. The input parameters that are required for the workflow to run are listed here and the output parameters, the resource, is listed here for us too. Clicking next takes us to, to giving the, uh, the service blueprint a name. We're going to leave it with the create a user, that's fine. Clicking next takes us to actually laying out the, the form that the user is going to interact with. So as you can see here on the left hand side we can create fields. We've got a list of all of the fields that basically the input parameters and we're going to do some reorganization here. So for example on the OU container we're going to change the label to say group. We're going to put some help in here which is just select the group for your user. We're going to move the confirm password field, put it beside the password field. And the last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to add a new field. So we're going to go and choose an integer field. We're going to drag it onto the form. We're going to place it beside group. We're going to call it cost center. And now we've created a brand new attribute that the users can com complete when they're entering their request. We can also put some constraints on this or any of the, the form, the fields on the form. By clicking on the field, we go to the constraints and we're going to make this field mandatory and we're going to make it always mandatory. However, we could go ahead and put conditional constraints on these fields, make them conditionally required, conditionally read-only or conditionally visible. Now that we're finished with our form, we're going to click on the next button here. And this takes us to deciding what do we want to be provisioned at the end of this particular workflow. So we click on the drop down and it offers us the new user, which is that custom resource we just defined. And we're going to say, yes, this is what we want. So we click on the add here. The administrator can publish the service blueprint and the resource actions to the catalog where they, they can then be entitled to the user. Please review the entitlement and approval videos to see how to add approval and entitlement policies. So now we have a new service blueprint. It's still in draft status in order to publish it to the service catalog so that it can be entitled. We click on the drop down at publish here. And now our service blueprint is published. Resource actions, as I mentioned earlier, are the day two operations and they're carried out in exactly the same way as the service blueprint. You choose the workflow, you build the form, you publish it. Catalog items created from custom services are requested from the service catalog, whereas resource or day two operations are requested or invoked from the items table. Here we can add a user to a user group and change a user password. The ability to request an item and carry out an action are managed by that entitlement process. As you can see, the advanced service designer allows you to rapidly deploy new IT services and day two operations, leveraging VMware and partner supplied VCO workflows and plugins. Service delivery is limited only by your imagination. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that it was informative. To learn more about vCloud Automation Center, there are additional videos available.